we got a new segment now called uh, Mike's Soapbox. Uh, it's a segment that's been going on for about three years, but we've never actually called it that. Um, but uh, I got to talk about one thing that has been very publicly annoying me lately. So three or four Valencia supporters were captured on film uh, at the end of the game, I believe it was the end of the game, making racist and anti-Semitic gestures in the direction of what I, what I believe is block 23 in the chat and the clock end. Um, and it's sadly, obviously, all too common around the world. It's, it's nothing new. It's nothing that surprised me. Uh, but it seems to be getting, you know, more and more so back, in, you know, into football especially. But on Friday morning, Valencia releases a statement in both Spanish and English. It was not poorly translated. It was directly translated in Spanish, uh, publicly condemning the isolated offenders and pledging to take strong action against them, which is great. Uh, it's exactly what they should have said. So why the fuck did they need uh, a club who has apparently, I've learned, very strong anti-Semitic, anti-fascism, or, or no, anti-anti-Semitic, I should say, uh, and an anti-fascist background in the in both the city and the football club? Why do they need to add a third part of the statement that starts with the word "while"? Uh, the statement is "while these actions are completely unjustifiable under any circumstances." Okay. VCF is also working to obtain more information about any possible provocations leading up to the verbal and gesticular exchange between the home and away stands. Can either of you please give me a good explanation for what the point of that statement was? What possible benefit does that serve? How do you provoke somebody other than like a huge poster of Sammy Davis Jr.? How do you post somebody into anti-black provoke somebody in anti-black, anti-Jewish gestures. You I don't, mean, Mike. You don't. I mean, at so the end why, of the day... I mean, there's, there's been criticism from all over the place about this, and then there's this backlash of people criticizing the people who criticize it and saying you're not taking Valencia's history into account. It wasn't all the player or all the fans. It doesn't and, matter. It doesn't, and, and, it, nor are most people criticizing that. They're just saying this was a stupid thing to say. Look, if you disagree with what I'm about to say, stop listening to our podcast altogether. But you're either racist or you're not. There's nothing that a person who is of color or a different religion can do to you where you would respond in a racial manner. That is like an anti-Semitic. You just there's no reason for it. You you go to that match knowing that you're going to make that type of a gesture. Um, and the only, and I said it to you, I think in, in a text, the only way that this stops in football is when the club gets kicked out of a competition, when it becomes such a paramount that it blows up where the Europa or UEFA just go to Valencia. Hey, there's no like to you're done. That's the only way any of this ever stops. And maybe it doesn't stop Mike, but it's the only way it, it stops. And there's nothing that drives a person to do any of those things, anything justifiable in that nature, unless you are 100% a racist. And, and no, it, no, know, person, and, no person with an education or a, or a, a mind that, that can think clearly would, would do that unless they are just 100% a racist. And so, you know, if you, like I said, if you disagree with this, just stop listening to us because that, you're not the kind of listener we want. At the end of the day, subscribe so that we get the you know the, the subscribe and like and stop listening. But th that's the way I look at it. You, you that it, it just there's no reason for someone to do that unless you are 100% a racist and you are already mindful of the fact that you're going to be making those suggestive. I don't know, like it, it's just it's it's, it's, absolutely... in your, it's just in your being to react to somebody. I mean, you know, very well across the aisle in, in block 23 could have been a black person and a guy with a yarmulke on, and that's just how they just, you know, I mean, I don't know if it was just their their go-to thing uh, when, I mean, they may have been provoked into, uh, you know, arguing back into whatever, but, you know, but not into those things. And and part of the problem is, you know, again, and, and Nikki, uh, I don't know um, what the, the level of seriousness of it was, but, you, you know, you said in the chat, it was only two people, and you're absolutely right. I might have said three or four, but it, the fact is, it is clearly not, as in some fan bases and some groups of ultras, it is clearly not a, a Valencia thing. It is two isolated things. Um, it's very much like, uh, but much more vile than pitch invasions. 
that, and we talked about those a few weeks ago. Um, it's the minority. Can you can you pun penalize? Uh, and, and John, I'll go to you in a second. Mm -hmm. Can you penalize a club for the actions of a few uh, who may not even have been season ticket holders? We don't know. Um, no, I don't think that it's that easy to do that. Although if it's a repetitive thing and you don't do something about it, yeah, they said and did all the right things. They pointed out the club president, I like to point out, tweeted something, and I had to double check that it was actually the club president, uh, tweeted out just an absolute condemnation in very, very strong words. Um, and, uh, you know, but the problem is why muddy the waters with the statement that implies that they were provoked? You, you, maybe Arsenal fans should be investigated for the role that they had in the back and forth. But to imply that the gesticular and, and verbals were, were provoked in any way is just stupid. And I just, and that statement is still standing up there on the internet with that third part on it. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand why you'd put that unless the, the club has, I don't know if the club has a history of this, I, I don't know that much about Valencia and their history. If the, if the club has a history of this, maybe the clubs put it out to like placate some of their fans. Maybe there is like a rogue ultra group that is this way inclined. And there's a, I'm not saying it's right, but obviously certain leagues, they have a way of policing these things and they have a level at which they police it. And in some leagues, quite frankly, they don't bother. They just let, let it happen, which is, you know, I watch a lot of Syria and some of the racism in that league is ridiculous. Some of the things that, you know, the, the players and the abuse they get and what the fans give out. It's um, almost more institutional in those settings. And yeah. that's what I would prefer. And, to. And, and, my, and my research shows it's not that way with Valencia. Yeah, unfortunately, in... In a lot of those cases, the league doesn't do anything. Um, I think you obviously have to identify the two fans and, and ban them, which it looks like the club is doing. That's fine. If it's a repeat thing that happens more times, then, yeah, you. I don't think fines work in football because the amounts that UEFA and everyone fine, it's like 20 grand, 50 grand, which is nothing to a football club. That's, 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 you know, that's pennies in their back pocket. You've got to do stadium bans, which is uh, it's unfortunate for the home fans. You know, for the majority of the fans, which is, you know, 99.9% .9 of the fans aren't that way inclined at all. Um, what that does encourage, though, if you get something like that, is that if they see a fellow fan who is doing that sort of thing, acting in that way, in that behaviour, that I'm not saying be a grass, but if there is some idiot next to me at a football ground who's doing a, you know, Nazi salute or screaming racist things or, you know, religious, whatever it is, First of all, I'd pull them up on it, and if they continued, then I'd just I'd call for a steward. You know, you, you yeah, don't have to confront, you don't have to confront them yourselves. You don't have to you know if you don't want to, um, and you don't even have to go to the steward publicly in front of them. You can do it quietly, and they will come and they'll they'll remove them. And you have to. I think clubs nowadays have to encourage, and for the most part, I think most fans are like this anyway. But you have to encourage fans to. I mean, it is grassing, if you want to call it that, or whatever way you want to talk about it, but it doesn't matter. These people aren't, they, they don't deserve to be at football in the first place. There are times that you should, that you have to be a grass or yeah. grass. Grass, saying it like a <laughs> grass doesn't sound, grass sounds, you know. Anyway, yeah, and I've heard about that. You know, we I, I had a debate with somebody where um, it was determined that someone in the North Bank earlier this season was making hissing noises. Yeah. And within five minutes, they were out of the stadium because of uh, self-policing from the fans who, yeah. you know, who wouldn't have it. And, and you know, it's – and I've had why word debates coming out the rear end about, uh, you know, with people about Spurs and our fans. You know, our fans are not, you know – these perfect group of people no, no, uh, who, who don't agitate and who, and, and there are surely racists and anti-Semites and everything else in our fan base as well. Absolutely. Um, but it was comforting to hear that at least in one case, probably many that there, there's some self-policing that goes on. I think for um, the most part, that is what happens on a away day like that. And it's European night, maybe the other Valencia fans, you know, the Arsenal fans, I'm sure they are shouting back and forth abuse. You've been to football games, you know what it's like. It's kind of part of the show. It's kind of pantomime. Sometimes it gets a bit heated. Maybe there's an Arsenal fan who said something, I don't know, derogatory to Spanish people or, you know, whatever it is. Um, that doesn't excuse what they did. And if anything, if there was an Arsenal fan who did that, then they should be reported as well. But um, Absolutely, but not not as provocation to racism. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. I'm willing to admit it was a stupid thing to say and not a, a you know, a vile uh, racist intent or anti-Semitic intent from the club. But, you know, 
they probably should have at least amended the statement. But yeah. uh, but that's my soapbox.